Former Proud Boys leader Enrique Tarrio was sentenced to 22 years in federal prison after being charged and convicted of seditious conspiracy for his role in the January 6th Capitol riots. Now, Tarrio, who served as national chairman for the far-right Proud Boys group, has received the longest sentence so far of any of the January 6 defendants. Judge Timothy Kelly said he would not grant the full 33-year sentence sought by federal prosecutors, but would grant a higher sentence than other extremist members in the hopes it would act as a deterrent. Tarrio, it should be noted, was not present in Washington, D.C. or the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, so this is something I talked about in my radar yesterday uh, regarding the conviction of two of the other Proud Boys leaders uh, who were in January 6th, who, who were there on January 6th and got um, uh, significant sentences, 17 years. Um, I, I can't remember what the other one was, but the very long sentences because they were perceived as having organized the event and the prosecutors gave a added a, a terrorism enhancement. That's why these sentences are so long. They're accusing them essentially of of uh, organizing a terrorist attack. And the judge, that Timothy Kelly, he basically said, uh, it's not a full terrorist attack, but okay, I guess it's kind of a terrorist attack. So he, he gave them, he gave prosecutors half the sentences that they were asking for. Um, you know, we were just talking in another segment about, uh, you were talking about the need for sentencing reform to not have people in prison for so long. Um, look, I absolutely think these people um, uh, who were there, I mean, Tario wasn't even there, but the other people did engage in, in trespassing and some other things. So I have no problem with them getting prison sentences, being charged. But this is, this is so extreme, so harsh, so punitive, such long prison times um, for, what, for what was not a, it was not a terrorist plot. It was not a plot to, to overthrow the government or prevent Joe Biden from taking office because it could have never succeeded. They interrupted a government uh, meeting. Again, bad, charged them, but they were they were not actually engaged in like a coup to take over the government. That was never going to work. The government was just going to meet at a different time elsewhere to sanction the uh, the the exchange of of, of uh, to, to you know, Biden's taking of office. So I, I feel like we're engaged in just totally like resistance, liberal, magical thinking about what happened on January six. At this point, it was very bad. It was not ever actually going to stop. What literally the riot, the literal riot on January 6th was not ever a, a, a planned, organized thing that was going to have anything to do with stopping um, Joe Biden's uh, t taking taking office. And these sentences, these sentences reflect something that is just fundamentally not true. And I'm, I'm pretty annoyed about it. <laughs> But it's the thought that counts, Robbie, right? They want <laughs> yeah, that's basically the election what they said. to be overturned. <laughs> yeah. um, I think it's a weird situation because you have Joe Biggs showing a ton of remorse, saying, like, I'm never going to do politics again. It seems to me that if we are upset at these people for doing this thing, what are we accomplishing by putting them in jail? That's a valid question. It seems that Joe Biggs, the proud boy who commented on it, has learned his lesson here and doesn't want to be involved in politics anymore and sees that they got carried away. Were there people who entered that building with the intent, it seemed, to commit violent acts against AOC and Nancy Pelosi and, and Mike Pence? Yeah, it seems that a lot of them had violent intent. That's something that our justice system should absolutely interrogate. I think the it's a, it's a weird thing balancing the fact that that people died that day, that there were people who showed up who did want the election to be overturned. There were people who were there that I'm sure really wanted to hang Mike Pence or find Nancy Pelosi or find AOC and do terrible things, potentially kill them, yes. Then I have on the other hand, what an amateur job it was, how poorly researched their work was, uh, how unsuccessful they were at the end of the day. Those two things are really difficult. And I think there has to be some other solution when I think about our system of justice of how do we resolve this from happening again? How do we you know, reform these people's way of thinking about our political system so that they don't believe the election was stolen, which we know definitely that it was not? How do we sit down with them and look through the evidence? Would that be more productive than putting them in prison for many, many years? Yeah. That's really what I think about when I think about this kind of a situation is if we want to prevent things like this from happening is putting a few people in jail or prison the way to do it. And yeah. I just don't think it is.
not for 22 years. I absolutely support prison sentences. I, again, I'm not a, I'm not a prison abolitionist. Um, I think there should be some punishment for they engage in trespassing. Um, Biggs, at least, um, took down the barricade. Obviously, Tario wasn't even there. Um, but, you know, maybe his communications or something, you know, they felt like he deserved some kind of, uh, you know, he's been at other uh, events. Just charge them for, for what they actually did and give them a, censor, uh, a sentence commensurate with that. Uh, some, a lot of these, uh, some of these January 6th people have been in prison, like, this whole time, right? So they have time served. Um, that seems like a deterrent to me. You know, again, some, some reasonable sentence, but 22 years, that's the sentence you give for, for, uh, for someone who, who murdered someone or murdered multiple people, um, someone who planned to actually blow up a building, maybe. Um, they, they, had, they had no actual plan. They, I, so I was there. I covered, uh, as, as I've said numerous times on this show, I was covering the, uh, the, the protest, which then turned into a riot. Um, it, there is no doubt in my mind it was, is largely spontaneous because the crowd was riled up from having heard Trump. 95% or more of the people there were engaging in First Amendment amendment protected activity. They were protesting. They had signs. They were angry. They had every right. You, you don't have to agree with the cause they're there for, but they have every right to engage in First Amendment protected activity on the steps of the Capitol, in front of the Capitol. A smaller number of people then struggled with police, tore down barricades, smashed the windows, went in, you know, defiled the place, prevented the uh, the 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 meeting from happening. I, char, I'm fine charging all those people. Obviously, they got to be, you know, convicted in a court of law. They get due process and the benefit of the doubt. But um, that's fine. But let's not chalk it up to it, it wasn't 9/11. It wasn't Oklahoma City. It wasn't um, it wasn't the Boston Marathon bombing. It wasn't even close to any of those things. It was a protest that got out of hand and became a riot. And um, and we need we need we need sanity. You know, calling it terrorism or calling everything terrorism. Is, is gonna re it's gonna backfire, by the way, on like leftist protesters or anti-police Black Lives Matter protesters type people. Imagine if you're charging all of them for uh, with terrorism and locking them up. I think many liberals and Democrats would be outraged about this, but I am not seeing outrage about these sentences from the mainstream media whatsoever. I had CNN on last night and they were talking about it. Um, they were they were certainly not they they didn't seem shocked at the the, the length of the sentences or didn't didn't have any. Um, concern that that was a little wild. Again, for someone, the most recent sentence, Tario, not even there on the day of the riot. Yeah, I think it's already backfiring for a lot of folks on the left when we talk about what's going on in Stop Cop City. There's some smoke signals coming out of Atlanta and Fulton County that there's actually going to be RICO charges against a lot of the organizers around Stop Cop City. So when we think about our right to protest and we think about what happened at January 6th, you know, you think about the crimes that were actually committed. Uh, you know, police officers lost their lives or the, the police officer that lost his life was trampled by many of the folks that were in the crowd. So it's very difficult to say, you know, who's responsible for that death. When you think about the people going into the building saying, you know, we need to find Nancy Pelosi, we need to find AOC, we need to hang Mike Pence. It becomes very difficult to identify, you know, the people responsible for escalating this to the point of people committing crimes at January 6th uh, to the right, getting completely out of hand. Are the people who organized the protest responsible for the crimes committed by those people who attended it? That's a valuable question. What happened at Stop Cop City that's that's signaling they should have RICO charges against the organizers? I have absolutely no idea. Uh, for them to say, you know, you're trespassing and you're camping out here and trying to prevent us uh, from having this huge militarized police training center for good reason. I think people don't want their country to have a huge militarized police force. Uh, at what point are we losing our right to protest when organizers are getting RICO charges and these huge sentences? That's a valuable question to be asking. And is our justice system just not equipped to interrogate these crimes, to investigate them, to figure out what really happened at January 6th and who is responsible? That's, I think, another major concern surrounding this. But it does have implications. I think you're right, Robbie, on the right and on the left. Hmm. Well, we will continue following that and we'll have more rising right after this.